Hi guys and welcome back to Keep Smiling Adventures and today I'm very very happy because I am going to be releasing my own bikepacking route. That's right, my bikepacking route is going to be available for you to go download and join the adventure. I hope that you guys will enjoy it and you'll go out and enjoy the adventure. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I, in my previous two videos, I took on my own bikepacking route. I created my own route, taking in some of my current favorite places that I love to cycle and some of my previous places that I love to cycle as a kid. And we went on a big 370 mile bikepacking adventure. So if you haven't seen that video, definitely go check them out. And in this video, I am going to be breaking down that ride, basically what it's about, what to expect, what bike, just breaking down the route, just in general, all the general notes, everything you need to know to take on this new adventure. So let's get into it. This ride is a ride I myself created, taking you on a journey throughout some of my favorite places that I have enjoyed riding over the years. This ride will take you on a 370 mile, mostly off-road adventure. The ride will give you an opportunity to experience epic open gravel roads to forest roads, single track, ridgeways, canals, country lanes, even some beautiful coastal cliff tops, and briefly the city of Oxford, where you will get to take in some of the city's most iconic buildings. This ride uses mostly bridleways, so the route is mostly car free. However, there are some sections where you will need to ride on the road. These are mostly country lanes or quiet roads. The busiest part is probably Oxford. However, there are shared use paths to be used for the less confident cyclists. You will get to ride some of my favorite places, including the Purbex, the White Horse Trail near Davies, and of course, my childhood favorite place, Brill Hill. As this ride follows multiple different trails, it is not always signposted. You will want to have a GPS unit for mapping. This ride is going to be for anyone looking for a mostly off-road adventure, but that isn't so remote that you need to be super self-reliant. However, this is quite a long ride, meaning you will be wanting to have a good level of fitness and bike handling skills. This ride is for someone who wants a bit of everything on their ride. From the occasional technical stuff to simple gravel trails and even a little bit of city riding. This ride will be great for a whole range of people. The cafe dweller, the pub crawler, the mile muncher or the out and out wild wanderer. The gravel bike really was an excellent choice of bike, as this route has lots of actual gravel lanes and bridleways with lots of pedaling sections. This route does have the occasional rough and technical sections, so I will say if you opt for a gravel bike, you will want at least 40 millimeter plus tires. If you are an experienced rider, however, you could do it on 35 millimeters. This route would also suit an XC bike or a short travel hardtail. Whether you are a hardcore wild camper or like a little more civilized stay at an official campsite or to live in luxury in B&Bs and hotels, this route has it all. There are plenty of official campsites along the route and plenty of B&Bs and hotels too. If you are like me who likes to wild camp, then there is plenty of quiet places along the route to hunker down for the night. But please understand that as this route is in England, wild camping is technically not allowed. So if you do decide to wild camp, leave absolutely no trace, set up late and do not have any fires. The difficulty of this ride, I think it is best to break it down into two parts. First, the route itself is fairly easy to ride and for the most part, there is very little hiker bike. A lot of the trails you will find yourself riding on are well used and mostly gravel, so tend to hold up in the wetter weather. 
When I tested this ride, I had a lot of rain and the trails were still rideable, but of course, use caution as conditions can always change. So for the trail difficulty, I will give this a four out of 10. However, this ride is quite a long ride at just under 400 miles and depending on how far you can ride in a day off-road, this ride can require a good amount of time to complete. So the difficulty in terms of length, it will be a seven out of 10. But please bear in mind, these scores are based on my own riding ability and depending on the rider, you may find it easier or harder. Now, given this, an overall rating is hard because I am going to be biased as I did put this route together. However, basing the score on everything I have stated above, the terrain, the wild camping, and the places this route takes you, I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10 because I generally had a lot of fun on this ride and the ride itself flows really nicely. There is a lot of places to stop and enjoy while having a good few wow moments and lots of riding that would just put a smile on your face while still pushing you and giving you that satisfying adventure feeling. When putting this route together, I wanted to make it as accessible to as many people as possible. So I tried my best to make sure it went through enough places where there are train stations. You can of course start wherever you like on this route as it is a loop, but I do recommend going in the direction I have created the route as it flows really nicely. If you can start and finish in Bournemouth, it is nice as you can finish your ride with a swim if that's your thing. But with that being said, here is a list of some of the train stations along the route. This ride is a long ride. So if you feel it is too long, then that's okay because I have tried to put this route together so it's very easy to shorten it. As this ride is made up with essentially three loops, you can remove the Purbex loop, for example, or maybe skip the Oxford and Brill part by cutting across from Hungerford. Whatever you decide to do, I just try to put together a route that you will all enjoy. This route is just under 400 miles and while the time it will take will depend on the individual, I will say for the fast and fit rider, you could enjoy this ride in four to six days. For a more leisurely pace, I would recommend anything from six to eight days. This route has no shortages of places to get food and water. Whether you want to stop for pub lunches or cafes, this route is full of places to stop. There are also multiple supermarkets along the route, so there isn't much need to carry lots of supplies. A couple things that should be noted before taking on this route are, number one, this route requires you to take a ferry from Studland to Sandbank, so check it is running. The cost is one pound. It's a chain ferry that runs most of the year, but does occasionally stop running for different reasons. I will include a link where you can check the ferry status down below. Number two, there is a potential that you may need to pick up your bike. One is at Wareham train station. If the crossing is shut, it's normally open, but it does shut at certain times. So you may need to carry your bike over the footbridge. Also at about the 62 mile mark, you technically use a gravel road that is classed as a footpath. And on occasions, the gates are locked and you may be required to lift your bike over the gate on each end and use the styles. If you can't or don't want to pick up your bike, you can easily just follow the road around. It's still a quiet country lane. Three. Unfortunately, there is a cycling ban on the National Cycle Route along the promenade between July and August between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. So if you arrive between them times, you will need to follow the Clifftop Road route or just walk along the seafront between Sandbanks and Bournemouth. 
4. On occasions this route briefly uses sections where you may have to dismount or give priority to pedestrians as some parts are technically footpaths. 5. Please note that although I have put together this route, understand that route conditions can change and be dangerous. So if you decide to take on this route, I am in no way liable for any damage or injuries you may occur. Please ride safe and respect other trail users. Well guys, there you go. There you have it. Everything you need to know about taking on my bikepacking adventure for you guys. Now I hope you guys will go out and enjoy the adventure. And if you do, please tag me at Keep Smile Adventures on Instagram, share all your photos. There'll be a link in the video description um, with a Kamut invite link so you can go and download the GPX for it and just join the ride. Um, definitely add all your pictures to Camus, um, add any of your favorite parts. If there's anything you don't like, do let me know. If you stay at any good places or you come across any um, good pubs or restaurants or cafes, add them to Cam the Camus map so other people that take on this ride will be able to find them nice and easily. And guys, I really hope you enjoy my bikepacking adventure. So get out there and enjoy the adventure. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy this adventure. Keep smiling, enjoy the adventure. Peace.